Um, pretty much, man, for me, man, it's all about preparation for those guys. Um, always being prepared, I mean, because, I mean, if you're prepared, you're ready for anything. You know what I mean? Um, you can have two good players. If one's prepared, the other one's not, you know, that the one that's prepared is going to, is going to come out on top. So I, 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 I try to stress that also with, in, with that as well as technique and fundamentals. Um, constantly teaching technique, constantly, I mean, the more you learn that, that technique, the better you're going to be on, on Saturday than them. And that, again, goes back to good versus good. I mean, if you got two good, good players, you know, they, they kind of cancel out. So once that technique takes over, you know, you, you're going to win that battle. Sure. And a real quick follow up uh, from your time playing at the highest level to now, what is it like coaching this uh, this athlete, you know, the, the 2021 type athlete? Similarities, the differences, what do you find with that? Um, it's probably a couple of differences just because there's so much more in the world now for, as far as distractions. You know, there wasn't all this social media when I played and all that. So you have to kind of capture their minds once they get into the building and, and try to hold that and, and and hopefully, you know, while they're here, they're picking up everything that, that you're teaching them, you know. So that's pretty much the biggest difference. Um, but they're all hungry just like we were, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's just the, the whole distraction pieces makes it a little, a little tough for those guys, this, you know, in 21. Right, right. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yep. Next question is from Stephen Brooks with 24-7 Sports. Hey, Travis. Nice to meet you. Um, you as well. Of, you know, as much as this is meeting you. Um, what, um, excuse me, I'm curious about your role last year and, and really what that entailed and how much did that allow you to get to know these guys that you're now going to be coaching, um, maybe get to know Harlan Barnett. Just curious when you're not one of those 10 on field guys, what sort of your duties were and, and again, just how much um, you're able to get to know these guys that you're now in charge of. I mean, I, I knew I, I had a good chance to, to, you know, meet the guys. I was always around them, you know. Um, coach, I was in Coach Barnett's meetings all the time. So, I mean, I, I heard him teach and I, I was in there learning the defense as he was teaching like I was one of the guys. So, I mean, but obviously I can't coach or I couldn't coach last year on or off the field. So it, it was it was good just to sit in and actually become a, a player myself. You know what I mean? But um, as far as the things that I did last year, I was pretty much breaking down past game for um, opponents and, um, you know, I, I would have my input in game planning as well, you know, but um, that, that, was, that was basically it. Gotcha. I also wanted to ask you, um, in your uh, your bio on the website, it mentions that you um, helped the Georgia DBs once Coach Tucker had uh, had sort of moved on to Colorado. Was that was that was that a situation where like you were just the guy at that point, and it was just up to you versus where you were pitching in before? And just what? How much was that experience sort of? Uh, important you know to your growth as a coach i mean it, it was it was great it great i mean um i coach tucker is as my mentor um, when i got to when i took the job at georgia he was the uh, defensive coordinator there and I, and I was his grad assistant so um in doing that we would uh he would like like he wants to do now he would all the dbs were in the, the room together corners and safeties um but once we got on the practice field he took the corners and i took the safety so it was it was kind of like a natural transition. I'd already been coaching those guys anyway, so it was it was pretty seamless to tell you the truth. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from Chris Solari with the Detroit Free Press. Contreras, um, how much have you gotten to work with Harlan uh, in the past year? And I guess how do you guys envision that that system working? I mean, do you feel like it's going to work like? like you and Mel had previously done in terms of, of uh, splitting it that way, or I guess kind of give us a, maybe a little bit of glimpse into how the inner workings of that room changes now. I mean, Harley, coach, coach Barnett, he's, he's the secondary coach and I'm the corners coach. I mean, he'll, 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 he'll do the bulk of the um, install, as you would say, and, and, and I'll have my guys near me. And if I have certain points, you know, during that meeting to, to make, I'll, I'll make them aloud or I'll just um, pretty much direct my any, any of my comments to, to the corner. So, I mean, it, it's, it's going to be smooth. Like I said, I was in uh, Coach Barnett's room with him all year. Uh, he's a great coach. Um, he's a great teacher. I learned a lot of, you know, I've, I've put some of his, the tools that he's, that he, that he uses into my tool belt. So um, I'm, I'm grateful for, uh, you know, continuing that relationship with Coach Barnett. And I think everything's going to work out fine. I think we're, we're going to have a pretty good um, back end this year. Can you give us a little maybe thumbnail sketch of what you see right now? Obviously, Shakur's gone. I mean, from the rest of the personnel group that you guys have, um, you know, 
particularly with Angelo Gross. I mean, he's a guy that kind of f- could float maybe in that nickelback or wherever you might need him. I guess kind of imp- just break down the the personnel grouping that you got. Well, it's kind of it's kind of um, early in that whole process, so it's kind of hard to kind of you know talk on that right now. We're still moving people around, you know, shuffling the pieces around. But uh, Angelo Gross, um, it was great that he got all that playing time last year. Man, he's he's going to come back. I think he's going to have a phenomenal year next year. And um, he, he's a young kid who's hungry, who's always wanting to, to do extra. So, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see what he does next year. But um, as far as, like, how what the dynamic is going to be in the back end and who's going to be where, we, we haven't really gotten there yet. We'll, we'll, we'll know more of that in the spring. It, it's just a quick clarifier. Where exactly does the nickelback fall? I mean, does he fall to you or does he fall to the – can the state um, room or we really haven't we, we haven't gotten to that point yet we, we'll kind of see how everything flows and then I mean, who, who knows how how things will turn out our next question is from matt wenzel with m live hey Travers. obviously you know you got the experience as a player you know college nfl how much do you think that helps with you know getting kids to buy in with what you know, you guys, you're coaching um, and just them and also in recruiting and, and you right. know, having been there and done that and, and, and be able to, I guess, sell results is the way. It, I mean, it, it helps. It helps Im- um, immensely. I mean, that's like um, I've been where they're trying to go. You know what I mean? So they they kind of they kind of their ears tend to perk up when I'm when I'm talking because they know I've been through the struggle that they they're going through right now. I've, I've been through which they don't do two a days, but I've been through two a days and you know, all, all that hard, hard work and all the meetings, late, late meetings. I've, I've done all that. I've sweated. I've bled. I've, you know, I've done everything they've, they've done. So, and I tell the route of the bat, I mean, I got really no sympathy for you because I've done what, 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 what you're doing. And, and they, they, they kind of, they kind of respect that. And, uh, and they, they kind of, they, they, they look, they look to me for guidance and I'm, I'm there for them to, they're there to give it to them. Thanks for ours. Yep. Next question is from Jim Caproni with Spartan Magazine. Hey, Travaris, it's nice to meet you. Thanks for taking time out to do this. Hey, when you came to Michigan State last year, pretty much sight unseen, I'm assuming, uh, to get uh, established with Mel Tucker as he got things going. What were your initial impressions of Michigan State? And uh, what are your thoughts about Michigan State since then, during this year, you know, the, the, the football uh, resources and the, the campus and, and, and so forth. What, what were your thoughts when you came in sight unseen? Sight unseen, just walking into the building. I mean, everything was 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 top notch. You know what I mean? I mean, everything was, I think when I, the first time I came in, they were about to get into a team meeting and I just saw, just looked at the kids. I, the kids were bigger than the school I previously left. So I, I, I knew we had bigger kids. I, and um, as far as like, uh, I hadn't really met all the coaches, so I can't really speak on the coaches yet. But now that I know them, man, we, we have a great staff. Um, I think I saw one one um, practice because COVID really shut everything. As soon as they got here, COVID shut everything down. So I, I was probably in the facility for two days at the most. But um, they had some workouts out out in the indoor, man. I, I just saw how the kids work. They seemed like they're all they were all you know dialed in. It was like no. They, 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 they were where their feet were, if you can understand what, what I'm saying. So I, I, I like the hungriness of this team, and I think this team is going to be really good. Um, How excited are you to get working with this group of corners now in, in, in a, a non-field role, expanded role? What, what does it feel like to you? Is I'm it- excited, man. I was itching. I was itching to get um, back on the field. Um, I, w- I, went to, I went home, well, to Colorado where my family still is currently, man. I, and I did a little free clinic. For um, his, my son's teammates and uh, my younger son's teammates, man, just to, you know, because I missed it so much. And then and, and, uh, just ironically, I got a call probably a day later saying that, you know, the job is opening. <laughs> so, so I mean, everything worked out. So, I mean, I'm, I'm itching to get back on there. I'm excited to work with the guys. I'm excited to work with the new guys that are coming in, you know, in June and um, ready to get this thing rolling. One more thing, please, if I, if I may. You're from Georgia. You played in Georgia in, in college. Now you're recruiting uh, to, to Michigan all across the country is the way the recruiting is set up. It's right. And when you do recruit somebody from the Sun Belt region or from Georgia, what are some of the challenges? And what, what do you tell those recruits about coming a long way from home to a different climate and so forth? Um, recruit I'm, I'm from, I'm from a really, really small town in Georgia. Uh, like 5,000 people. I mean, 
everybody doesn't have my situation, but a lot of those guys that are recruiting are in that same situation. And you can just get, you, you, need, you need to see things in the world. You know, you, you don't you need to kind of get out of your comfort zone, come check something else out. I mean, I got drafted um, by Buffalo in the second round of 2000. Uh, I'm coming from, I've been in Georgia my whole life. It's, it's snowing out there. I would, I would have loved to have played, you know, at Michigan State to, you know, experience that before I got drafted to, you know, Buffalo. So it kind of prepares you for, for, um, for, for, for your next, if you have ambitions to go to the next level, I mean, you never know where you're going to end up. So I kind of tell them that, and, you know, as far as our staff, I mean, we got some great guys on staff that, like I said, been where they're trying to go. And uh, Michigan State's top-notch program um, academically. So, I mean, it's, it's like a, a win-win situation. So um, sometimes you have to uh, step out of your comfort zone, comfort zone and, uh, you know, take a chance. All right. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Thank yep. you. Time for a couple more. It looks like uh, Stephen Brooks uh, from 24-7 Sports has another one for you, Coach. Yep. Sure. Thanks, Ben. Uh, Travis, I want to ask you just what um, – was coaching always something you were interested in or, you know, what made you get into it? Cause again, according to your bio, you started at high school and then uh, went to Georgia, obviously like what got you into coaching? What made you want to get into college coaching? Um, was that always something you were interested in or how did that all develop? Um, it, it probably, it probably came in, in, into light probably um, my last year in Miami. I know, I knew I knew my time was, was about to be up and I still wanted to be around the game. You know what I mean? I thought I had a lot that I could, you know, give to a kid. Um, I have a lot of experience um, on and off the field. You know, I, I can relate to the, to those kids. So that that was kind of like a natural transition. And our and I um I wanted to go. I, I truly wanted to ha to do that track from high school. Through you know you know what I mean. Almost like I wanted to earn my stripe. If you know what I'm saying. So. Um, luckily, I was able to do that. I was able to go coach actually with my high school coach. Um, he, I mean, great guy, Mark Stroud um, at Calvary Day in Savannah. So he, I learned a lot from him. He's a man of faith. And um, I, I just, you know, I kind of just soaked in everything that he, he was doing. And it's kind of, you know, grew in me. And, and I've kind of taken things from everybody I've worked with. At that point, did you think that would just sort of be it, or did you have eyes on going to college or a higher? No, I always knew I wanted to to to, to get to a next level. Um, okay. Because sometimes in high school, kind of it kind of gets redundant a little bit. <laughs> the competition is not as good, especially if you uh, the team I was coaching on was a pretty good little team. So we, we were winning by a lot, a lot of points. So it kind of got kind of it was it didn't have the same excitement, you know, that um, college and the NFL had. So I, I was I was ready to move up to another level. Gotcha. And then just one more thing, if I could really quick, um, you mentioned uh, getting a call about the spot being open. Does, is that a situation where Mel just says you want it or not? Or do you, did you go through a, through a formal or semi-formal interview process? Just I, to, I, went, I went through a formal interview process. I okay. mean, because um, Coach Hazleton has, you know, it's not just Coach Tucker, Coach Hazleton, he's the um, defense coordinator. He needs to know too. So I, I went through uh, the, the, the uh, normal channels of interviewing, I mean, I, I got to show him, you know, how I teach and, you know, my my coach philosophy and all that stuff. So it, it was great. And I'm glad I did it. I mean, because I think now he knows he has, he has the right guy on staff with him. Got it. Thank you. Looks like we have one more question for you, coach from uh, Chris Solar, the Detroit free press, Chris. Yeah. When you you mentioned about being when your time in Miami, you played with Ronaldo Hill there, correct? Correct. Yep. Now, how much have you talked with Ronaldo? I mean, this is obviously a, a spot that, you know, before he, he, he made his ascent, I mean, he, that was, this is a spot that he had an eye on at, at one point, I guess. What have you guys talked about with, with getting that job and what to kind of expect from just the Michigan state community? I mean, uh, we really hadn't, it hadn't been like long conversations, been more texts. I mean, he, as soon as he found out I had the job, he, he sent me a text. I mean, because we, we, we always talk, I always talk, um, talk ball with him. You know what I mean? So he congratulated me. I'm, I'm sure he'll, you know, we'll, we'll talk more about the whole um, Michigan State um, traditions and all that. But um, really right now, we've just been talking ball. And, you know, he's in the NFL, so he's, he, he's got questions about people I've coached in the past, you know, just trying to get a bead um, as far as their NFL um, selection, um, draft selection and all that. But um, Ronaldo is a great dude. Uh, we, had our, we had a great time in uh, Miami together, and um, it was great playing alongside him. And I know anytime I have any kind of questions about Michigan State, I know exactly who to turn to, and you know, to, to, to get any kind of information. 